House Republicans have passed a bill that would massively benefit corporations, coupled with a slight expansion of the child tax credit. Called the Tax Relief for American Families and Workers Act of 2024, the bill actually barely helps either of those groups while massively cutting taxes for the wealthy. Because of course, right? Still, it passed in the House in an overwhelming 357 to 70 vote with 169 Republicans and 188 Democrats supporting the measure. Now, obviously, they supported the measure probably because, well, child tax credit, but also corporate tax cuts. Let's keep it real. Um, <laughs> so 23 members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, however, voted against it because it was too slanted towards the rich. Uh, Representative Rosa DeLauro of Connecticut, for example, the top Democrat in the House Appropriations Committee, said that she opposed the bill because it is deeply inequitable at a time when we have seen the greatest rise in inequality but the biggest corporations making super profits at the expense of the consumer. Yes, this is true. Um, and a lot of that, of course, profit uh, comes from inflation. Or I should say greedflation, uh, where, yes, you have seen uh, a rise in the cost to make goods or perform services, right? Uh, but a lot of corporations have taken that to an excess and added a nice little comfortable profit margin in that, uh, hiking it up uh, the cost of their goods and services even more than the actual cost increases that have come to them. So they've taken advantage of this and they have bragged about it uh, and saying that we've, yes, jacked up our prices even higher than we needed to to keep up with the inflation. And so we pass that on to the consumer and we are making so much money as a result. So that's what's going on here. Uh, they're inc insanely profitable. And the last thing they need is another corporate tax cut. Unfortunately, they might get one. Uh, and I'll explain the might. Now, first, let's go to the American Prospects, David Dayen, uh, who has estimated that in the time period when all the tax credits are actually in place, the business tax changes will be five times more costly to the federal government than the CTC changes. So... Yes, the tax cuts are going to cost way more than the actual child tax credit uh, that will, you know, again, help average people. Uh, unfortunately, the bill is also written in a way that excludes the poorest. I'll get to that. Um, let's go to Deloro here. She continued by saying it is a mockery of who representative government works for. This bill delivers mass massive tax cuts for the biggest corporations while denying middle class families the economic security they had out of the expanded monthly child tax credit. This is a reversal of the largest middle class tax cut in history. The bill provides millions of dollars in tax relief for the wealthy and pennies for the poor. So how this is different than the previous child tax credit is, well, there's a, let's see. Um, it leaves out the poorest Americans. Families with less than 200, uh, I'm sorry, $2,500 in Yearly income, the very poorest, are excluded from this. Okay? The people who need the relief the most, the working poor, get absolutely nothing. The rich get everything. And as I've mentioned in previous stories, you have people that are in the lowest income brackets in all the states that have regressive tax systems. Every, all 50 states. Okay? Okay? They're all regressive in some way, where you have poor people paying more of their income in taxes than rich people. And so federal tax relief, right, might actually help. And getting this child tax credit on a monthly basis as it was before was incredibly helpful. But again, one of the changes to this is that it's not a monthly tax credit. It's refundable once a year at tax time. So it completely changed it. So now people are not seeing the help in a monthly check. Now they're just seeing it when they go to file their taxes. And there is a lot of people that ends up missing because there are a lot of people that don't make enough income, don't qualify enough. Uh, you know, even even over the two hundred, uh, I'm sorry, two thousand five hundred dollar range, that still don't file taxes because they just don't make enough. And so they're not going to be able to take advantage of this credit. It's ridiculous. So 
Again, the rich get everything, the poor get absolutely nothing. The Center on Budget and Policy Priorities has estimated that the CTC changes in the House passed bill would benefit about 16 million children and low-income families uh, and lift about 400,000 kids out of poverty in the first year of enactment. Okay, that's a benefit, yes. Could it be a lot better? Absolutely. The Tax Policy Center noted that the poorest 20% of families would receive just $60 on average, while the richest, 0.1%, get an average of $57,530 in yearly tax breaks. So, again, it, it is massively weighed. Yes, just a little bit of good, a little bit of crumbs for poorer people while excluding the poorest, but massive benefits for the rich. Now, Rashida Tlaib, who voted against the bill uh, before the vote, put out a statement. Uh, she pointing out that Basically, the richest 120,000 households would get a larger share of the tax benefits than the bottom 88 million families during the bill's first year. She used the example of Meta, the owner of Facebook, who would see its effective tax rate drop from 25% to negative 2% under this bill. Working families in my district should never be paying higher taxes than the richest companies on earth. Unfortunately, that's a situation that we have, and this will not help. This actually makes the inequality worse. Uh, Representative Gwen Moore, Wisconsin, a CPC member who also voted against the legislation, said that while she welcomes the bill's improvement to the CTC and the low-income housing tax credit, the measure makes compromises that I cannot accept. Other Democrats, including Chair Pramila Jayapal, who did vote for it, by the way, um, she similarly criticized the bill's corporate giveaways, but argued that the benefits for children warranted a yes vote. While I find this trade-off troubling, and I strongly believe that we need to do everything possible to ensure the wealthy pay their fair share, this vote was for the working families in Seattle and communities across the country who will benefit from an expanded CTC. And I recommit myself to ensuring that we fully fund the CTC to, to the benefit of as many people as possible when Democrats are back in control of the House. She said in a statement, again, I don't like the trade-off here. Uh, massive gains to the rich, very minimal help for the poor. Yes, it exists. But I don't think it can justify what little help there is to helping the rich in a, such a big way. Look, the original program, the original child tax credit, which was a monthly check, should never have been allowed to end on Biden's watch. It was an incredibly popular program among voters because, again, people could see that. They could see that check come in and that helped them. This super watered down version, yes, it still helps some, some people, right? I can't discount that. But at the same time, there's a massive cost, and that's letting the rich get even richer. But look, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. This might not even pass the Senate. And it could be because Republicans might believe it's too generous. Or they might believe that passing this would give Joe Biden too much of a win. In fact, that's what Senator Chuck Grassley had suggested. He said, I think passing a tax bill that makes the president look good may allow checks before the election, it means that he can be reelected and then won't extend the 27 tax, 17 tax cuts. So now wait a minute here. So there's a little bit of sleight of hand being played by uh, Chuck Grassley in that statement. For one, there are, yes, tax cuts that are coming up uh, that will be sunset in 2025. Right. So that's part of the Trump tax cuts. Now, here's the thing. The Republicans designed it that way, designed it to uh, these middle class tax cuts to end in 2025. OK. They specifically wrote, though, that the corporate tax cuts be permanent. So this was baked in to allow this to end up being a tax fight in the 2024 uh, election, okay? So as far as uh, Democrats, you think they would allow the middle class tax cuts to expire? I don't think so. I'd be very surprised if they didn't vote to extend them, all right? Uh, I could see though, Republicans playing games, putting in either poison pills, uh, in, in the extension to the middle income cuts, or attaching riders, which further lower corporate taxes even more. And again, they set this up knowing 
that it would be very unpopular for Democrats to oversee a massive tax increase. So ultimately, though, that I think is the plan by Republicans, uh, you know, to use these uh, incoming tax cuts to, you know, try to uh, or the incoming sunset of those tax cuts to try to get more corporate tax cuts on top of what they just got now, because this is the playbook attached something that was very popular. Water it the hell down as they did with this and put on giant corporate tax cuts uh, in order to make it pass. And so that is very likely um, what we're going to see going forward and what we see right here. So once again, the rich Republicans are, they're representing the rich and they always have, and they will continue to do so with bills like these.